we're going to do a tune that comes from Ireland called She Beg She Moor. That is in the Irish language, and that means the small fairy house and the large fairy house. And they are actually fairy houses that are built in a mound underground. And there's a wonderful tune made by O'Carolyn that's called She Beg She Moor, as I mentioned, and that's what the song is referring to. And there are a lot of great uh, origins for Halloween coming from Ireland. So we thought we'd do uh, an Irish tune for you on the flute and the fiddle. So here she begs you more. One, two, three, one, two. <laughs> Welcome to our Halloween-themed Family Fun Day. My name is Todd Weston, and I'm one of the educators here at the Long Island Museum. You're joining me today in our Streets of New York gallery inside of our Carriage Museum. And for this special occasion, we thought we would take the time to show you our gallery in a little bit of a different light. We thought we'd show you our Streets of New York gallery in less light, to try to show you how night in the 1850s would have looked. Without modern electricity that we use every day today, the only thing people could use were candles and oil lamps to light their way. Things like this would have been common for everyone to own, and you would have carried it with you wherever you went at night. You also could have paid other people to carry them ahead of you, whether you were walking or riding in your carriages. Early in New York City's history, the only way streets were lit 
was actually through homeowners who lined the streets, keeping lamps and candles on in their windows at night. It was publicly mandated. You had to keep light, lights on in your windows. That way people could see at night. It wasn't until 1823 that the New York Gaslight Company started to install public street lights like the one you see here. In 1832, the Manhattan Gaslight Company continued the spread until more and more of Manhattan and Brooklyn were lit at night through public street lights. In the late 1800s, they transitioned to electric bulbs far more similar to the lamp you see in front of me. Now let's take the time to explore the streets of New York Gallery to see some of our carriages under the 1850s light. We'd love to take the time to show you some of the carriages you may have seen in New York City at night in the 1850s. This carriage is a doctor's buggy, and it is also called a Storm King. The company called it a Storm King because it allowed anybody the ability to travel without having to worry about the weather. The front glass here could be removed on a nice day, and the side panels could be lowered in case of inclement weather. There is actually a cut right here inside the front where the reins for the horses could go in so the driver could drive out of any weather. And there is a hook right here where the driver's lantern could be placed to help them see as they went along their way. Carriages like this coach were a common sight in New York City as they brought people in and out from across the country. Though this carriage may not have had a lantern on it itself, many times someone would be paid to walk in front of horse-powered carriages like this throughout the night wherever they would go. This would be a difficult but important job many young boys would have. This dog cart, built in 1902, has a special compartment made to safely house hunting dogs. When used for early outings and late evenings, its two lanterns would help the driver and dogs inside arrive at their destination safely. Each lantern has two sides made of glass and two sides made of metal lined with a reflective surface to help amplify the light. This is a one-of-a-kind vehicle in our collection. Made in 1902, this electric car built by Studebaker, has an electric engine and electric headlights. Similar to the oil lanterns, its headlights are lined with reflective surfaces inside to amplify the light. Though the bulb is more similar to our modern headlights, the amount of light it produced was probably more similar to the oil lanterns of the carriages it shared the road with. This carriage is called a roof seat brake and is named for its high seats and its use in training horses. This particular vehicle was owned by a wealthy Long Islander and was equipped with special compartments to store food and drink and the dishes needed to enjoy them while on excursions. These lanterns are designed to help light the path ahead as best as possible. Regardless of their effectiveness to light the road, the size of the lanterns and the size of the carriage were very effective at showing the wealth of the owner. Now that we've shown you some of our galleries in 19th century lighting, I thought it was important to take the time to talk about just how strong these lamps and lanterns really were. Simple candles and oil lamps have existed for thousands of years and helped us see at night the entire time. But these lamps really could only show so much of the night. One candle can actually only light up about 12 feet in front of you. And even if we add one candle and another candle and another candle, we still can only see so much. But these lights, unlike modern electric headlights, weren't for seeing everything in front of you. They were for other people to be able to see you. Accidents could still occur even in the time of horse-drawn carriages, and it was very important that everyone on the road knew where you were. Another important tool, other than the lamps for knowing where you were on the road, were sleigh bells. These, combined with the lamps, would help people on the road know wherever you were any time of day. The Little Old Lady Who Is Not Afraid of Anything by Linda Williams, illustrated by Megan Lloyd.
Once upon a time, there was a little old lady who was not afraid of anything. One windy afternoon, the little old lady left her cottage and went for a walk in the forest to collect herbs, spices, nuts, and seeds. She walked so long and so far that it started to get dark. There was only a sliver of moon shining through the night. The little old lady started to walk home. Suddenly, she stopped. Right in the middle of the path were two big shoes, and the shoes went clump, clump. Get out of my way, you two big shoes. I'm not afraid of you, said the little old lady. On she walked down the path, but behind her she could hear two shoes go clump, clump. A little farther on, the little old lady stumbled into a pair of pants, and the pants went wiggle, wiggle. Get out of my way, you pair of pants. I'm not afraid of you, said the little old lady, and she walked on. But behind her she could hear. Two shoes go clump, clump. One pair of pants go wiggle, wiggle. Farther still, the little old lady bumped into a shirt, and the shirt went shake, shake. Get out of my way, you silly shirt. I'm not afraid of you, said the little old lady, and on she walked a little bit faster. But behind her she could hear. Two shoes go clump, clump. One pair of pants go wiggle, wiggle, and one shirt go shake, shake. A little ways on, the little old lady came upon two white gloves and a tall black hat. And the gloves went clap, clap, and the hat went nod, nod. Get out of my way, you two white gloves and you tall black hat. I'm not afraid of you, she said. And on she walked, just a little bit faster. But behind her, she could hear. Two shoes go clump, clump. One pair of pants go wiggle, wiggle. One shirt go shake, shake. Two gloves go clap, clap. And one hat go nod, nod. By now, the little old lady was walking at quite a fast pace. She was very near her cottage when she was startled by a very huge, very orange, very scary pumpkin head. And the head went, boo, boo. This time, the little old lady did not stop to talk. She did not stop at all. She ran, but behind her she could hear two shoes go clump, clump. One pair of pants go wiggle, wiggle. One shirt go shake, shake. Two gloves go clap, clap. One hat go nod, nod. And one scary pumpkin head go boo, boo. The little old lady did not look back. She ran as fast as she could and didn't stop to catch her breath until she was safe inside her cottage with the door locked. She sat in her chair by the fire and she rocked and rocked. It was so quiet in her cottage before the knock, knock on the door. Should she answer it? Well, she was not afraid of anything. So she went to the door and opened it. What do you think she saw? Two shoes go clump, clump. One pair of pants go wiggle, wiggle. One shirt go shake, shake. Two gloves go clap, clap. One hat go nod, nod. And one scary pumpkin head go boo, boo. I'm not afraid of you, said the little old lady bravely. What do you want anyway? We've come to scare you. You can't scare me, said the little old lady. Then what's to become of us? The pumpkin head suddenly looked unhappy. I have an idea, said the little old lady. She whispered into the pumpkin's ear. The pumpkin head nodded and its face seemed to brighten. The little old lady said good night, closed the door, and whistled on her way to bed. The next morning she woke up early. She went to her window and looked out into her garden. And what do you think she saw? Two shoes go clump, clump. One pair of pants go wiggle, wiggle. One shirt go shake, shake. Two gloves go clap, clap. One hat go nod, nod. And one scary pumpkin head go boo, boo. And scare all the crows away.
Hi, I'm Miss Sam, one of the educators here at the Long Island Museum, and today you are going to be seeing some pumpkin decorating videos as part of our Halloween Family Fun Day. I am joined by glitter scientist Anique from Hearts and Flowers, and we are going to be showing you three different ways to decorate pumpkins. I'm going to show you how to use nail polish to make a water marble design, and how to use paint to make a galaxy design, and Anique is going to show you how to glitter bomb some pumpkins. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to water marble a pumpkin with nail polish. So you're going to need a pumpkin. It can be any size. I'm using just this tiny little one. You're going to need a Tupperware filled about three quarters of the way with water, preferably cool or room temperature. You don't want to fill it up all the way because otherwise when you put your pumpkin in, the water will overflow. But you want it to be high enough that your pumpkin won't touch the bottom. You're going to need nail polish. For a small pumpkin, I'd recommend three to five colors. Also, the nail polish dries super fast, so you don't want to use too many colors and take too long. And then you're going to need something to mix the nail polish with. I just have toothpicks. If you have chopsticks, a kebab stick. This project is super cool because it's basically done with things that you already have around your house. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some nail polish and I'm going to very lightly drip it over the water from not too far away, not too high up, but not too close. And I'm gonna let the nail polish make a little skin on top of the water. And I'm gonna take all of my colors. You can use as many colors as you want in any order you want. And you're just gonna pour each new color right into the center of the last color. So they're gonna make circles, kinda like tree rings. And you don't want to take too long to do this, just a few minutes so the nail polish doesn't dry because the water is going to make your nail polish dry. So I have glittery black, I have blue, I have light purple, and I have a magenta purple. Okay, so I have all of my colors poured in. Right now it looks almost like a cool crystal or geode or something in my bowl. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a toothpick and very gently I'm going to push the nail polish around on the top of the water to make a swirly design. And that way the design will come out on my pumpkin. If you start making the design and you feel like you need more colors, you can always go in and add a little more. I'm going to add a little more glitter to mine. No such thing as too much glitter. Okay. Now that I have a swirl design that I like, I personally am going to put a glove on because I have my nails painted and I don't want to get it ruined. But if you don't worry, want to worry about getting nail polish on your hand, that's fine. Nail polish remover will take this right off. And all you're going to do is hold your pumpkin by the bottom, as close to the bottom as you can. And very gently, just dunk it right in the middle of that nail polish and swish it around a little bit and then you pick it up and you take it out. And then all you have to do is let it sit and dry. Could take a couple minutes, could take a couple hours. There'll be some water drops. Don't worry, those will evaporate off. And then you have a water marble pumpkin. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to make a galaxy pumpkin with paint. So you're gonna need acrylic or tempera paints. I have a aqua color. It can be any kind of blue or green though, a purple. I personally have light violet. You could also have another shade of blue or green. I have turquoise. And then you're going to need white and you're going to need black. And I already did this step with the black. The first step is to paint your entire pumpkin black and let it dry. I did this yesterday. That way it would have plenty of time to dry. You can do it probably an hour or two before you do the rest of it. And it would be fine, but you definitely want to let it dry or it's going to get on all your other colors. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your aqua, your purple, and your blue. And you're gonna put them, you can put them on a palette, you can put them on a paper plate if you don't have a palette. You can put them on wax paper. I love wax paper because it keeps the paint from drying and sticking everywhere. You can also use wax paper as a placemat for art and your art won't stick to it, unlike newspaper. Okay, and now that I have my three colors, I'm going to take some sponges. I have these little sea sponges. You can take any kind of kitchen sponge, cut it up into a small piece. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And you're just going to put a little bit 
of each color on a sponge and you're going to sponge it on your pumpkin and you're going to go over the whole area put it however you think it looks cool and we're going to make kind of a galaxy effect which is why we chose these colors so that they would look like a galaxy on the black because whenever you see galaxy things they're usually a lot of cool colors blue purple green and you can just put however much on however you like it it's all about what you want making it look the way you want it to look i'm putting a lot of purple because purple is my favorite color so i want to have more of that and you can go back over with the other colors again it's all about having fun and making it look however you like so once you're happy with the way you did that you're gonna take your white paint. It's better for the white paint if you have a slightly drippier paint for the technique that I'm gonna show you at the very end. But now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a smaller paintbrush and you're just gonna add some little stars to it. You can just do it by putting dots, just poking little dots. You can even use the back of the paintbrush, which is nice because you can use any size paintbrush and you just poke it all over and you make stars. You can also draw actual stars. You could draw a moon. If you know a constellation, you can put a constellation, maybe your zodiac sign. Let's see. I'm gonna add a little moon to mine because I love the moon. And then once you're happy with all of those stars that you put on it, we're gonna do the last step to make it look like the pumpkin has a star field on it. Now this step is definitely a little messy for your hand, but it's really fun and looks really cool. So if you have it, the best thing to do this with is an old toothbrush, or if not, you can use an old paintbrush that's kind of hard. You just need something where the bristles are stiffer, and you're gonna lightly dip the toothbrush in your white paint. You don't wanna have too much, but you don't wanna have too little. And then you're gonna take your finger and you're gonna run it along the toothbrush and it's gonna splatter all over your pumpkin and it's gonna make it look like itty bitty stars. Like your pumpkin is out in space. And you might get some lines too, which look like shooting stars. And this is also just really fun, but it is the messiest part. So make sure you're doing it on a placemat, somewhere clean. Make sure you're not wearing anything you like too much. And same with the colors, you just put on as much as you like. And then, once you feel good about it, you're all done and you have a galaxy pumpkin. Ta-da! Hi friends, my name's Anique. I'm a floral designer at Hearts and Flowers. Today, we are going to make glitter pumpkins. Now, I'm obviously an adult, so I don't have to ask permission before I make a mess. But I would ask your adult or your grown up if you can make glitter pumpkins. The best way to do it is in a tray. That way all your glitter stays in one place. Now, we have lots of pumpkins to choose from. We have glue. And now, for this project, you really just need glue and glitter. You can use a glove to apply your glue if you'd like, or you can use a paintbrush if you really don't like touching it. I don't have that problem. So let's begin. Wanna get your pumpkin super gluey. And then you use your hands. Everything gets gluey. Okay. So once you have a nice coat of glue, I still have glue on my hands. So, you know what? We're going to use the tray as a display. So for these pumpkins, I'm going to show you how iridescent glitter will look on the white jack versus the orange jack. So you really just, I like to use the same color and then pour it back so it's not as wasteful. And you really just load your pumpkin up. So 
So that's fun and sparkly and orange. Now this one looks a little bit more like Cinderella's coach. Very elegant. Now, if you want to, you can always do something a little bit different with your pumpkins. And this is when a paintbrush would be fun and helpful. You can dip your paintbrush in and you can paint kind of stripes or polka dots and you would go over it. And this is tricky because you have to remember where your clear glue is. Otherwise, what's the point? So for this one, we're going to break into the fun glitter packs and let's do something spooky. Naranja or orange. So now you have a fun little design pumpkin and now you can go in there again with your paintbrush and you can fill in all those gaps that you had because in theory what's already covered won't get covered again so you just paint in those little little bits that you didn't cover you paint that with your glue and now we're going to use some gold. When in doubt, just add more sparkles. You could make a fancy glitter pumpkin. You can take all that glitter that you sort of ended up mashing together and you can save it and then you could have fun rainbow glitter pumpkin. And just have fun with it because it's sparkly and it's glitter and it's magic. Thanks friends for joining us. Hope you guys had the most magical Halloween and a very spooky day. to do a Halloween version of Old McDonald, or we're going to call it Old McSpooky's Farm. So first of all, Old McDonald will now be Old McSpooky because he's dressed up in a spooky costume. We are going to have, instead of animals like ducks and cows and horses and pigs, we'll have ghosts and bats and other spooky creatures on the farm. And instead of E-I-E-I-O, we're going to say E-I-E-I Boo. So I hope you can join us at home. I've got my son Johnny and my son Paul playing bass and fiddle. And here we go. One, two, three, go. Well, old Nick Spooky had a farm. E-I-E-I-Boo! And on that farm they had a little ghost. With a woo here and a woo there Here a woo, there a woo, everywhere a woo Old Big Spooky had a farm E-I-E-I-Boo! Well, Old Big Spooky had a farm E-I-E-I-Boo! And on that farm he had a little bat E-I-E-I-Boo! With a flip flap here and a flip flap there, here a flip, there a flap, everywhere a flip flap. Oh, big spooky had a farm, e i e i boo. Well, oh, big spooky had a farm, e i e i boo. And on that farm they had a little witch, e i e i boo. With a witch chat here and a witch chat there. Here a hat, there a hat, everywhere a witch chat. Old Nick Spooky had a farm. E I E I Boo! Well, Old Nick Spooky had a farm. E I E I Boo! And on that farm they had a little vampire. E I E I Boo! With a 
here and a there. Oh, excuse me, out of our spooky at all, it's yummy delicious candy, right? So we gotta get our yum yums ready. Well, I'll make spooky out of bomb. Yeah, yeah, boo! And on that farm, they had some candy. Yeah, yeah, boo! With a yum yum here and a yum yum there. Here a yum, there a yum, everywhere a yum yum. Oh, make spooky out of bomb. Yeah, yeah, boo! Take it out on fiddle. Happy Halloween!